Hi, this is James Sondriger here at Juniper Networks Education Services. Are you familiar with our learning pads? We offer 14 different pads covering the Junos OS and specific Juniper technologies. Each path shows the courses we offer and the relevant certifications in the order we suggest to maximize your learning. Just visit www.juniper.net slash learning paths to get started. When you click on a track, you'll see all the courses in that track and the associated certifications. You can click each course or certification to view more details. If you follow a learning path, you'll get the most from your training with Juniper Networks. Now, let's get to your Learning Byte. Welcome to Juniper Networks Education Services Learning Byte. My name is Maro Fionis and I'm a lab architect with Education Services within Juniper Networks. In this learning byte, we'll be talking about configuring multiple Junos devices using Junos Pi Easy and templates. After successfully completing this learning byte, uh, you'll be able to uh, configure multiple Junos devices using the Junos Pi Easy framework and configuration templates. Before you begin, you should have basic understanding of Python. If you are new to the Python world, uh, you should check out the uh, Python org website. It's very helpful uh, and there are a lot of documentation available there that will get you started. Uh, next, you should review the Junos Pi is the documentation available on the Juniper Networks Tech Wiki site. Okay, there are some examples for different uh, functionality of Junos Pi is so that is very helpful. Uh, lastly, you need to have Junos Pi is uh, installed on the system while running your scripts. Okay. Uh, let's go to the demonstration of, uh, of, of, of the config deployment process. Okay, so for this uh, um, learning byte, I basically considered a scenario uh, that you may find common in many places. Uh, let's say we have a uh, you know CSV file, which is called devices.csv, uh, that that, uh, that that we'll be using uh, 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 for the deployment. Uh, so uh, on the CSV file, you'll see there are three host uh, definitions, and what our goal is basically to configure these three firewalls, you know, with uh, different configurations. Okay, so we'll be configuring uh, the trust interface, the trust IP, admin user, uh, domain, uh, NTP, and DNS, and the host name. Okay, and the last one, the management IP. Uh, we'll be using for our script. Uh, so the script will be using this IP address to uh, access the device uh, through the management network. Okay, and we also have a config template that we'll be using. So uh, let me show you that first. So this is just a basic config uh, template that we'll be using. So we're going to be using you know this template, and Junos Pi is uses uh, the uh, Python Jinja two, I believe. So Jinja two. Uh, Python templating, uh, uh, you know, style. Uh, so uh, in this style, you know, when you have your config file, uh, you can uh, put, uh, you know, double curly braces like this, and then put a variable inside that that you'll be uh, dynamically changing uh, th through different devices. You know, so your configuration may be same, but the values may be different. Right in this case, okay. So that that's what the beauty of this uh, templating mechanism. Okay, so uh, as you see here, we'll be you know configuring the host name, the domain, um, the DNS, and we're gonna be adding a user, and then a configure NTP, and then uh, defining an interface with the IP address, and then we're gonna be assigning that interface under the trust zone. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm using uh, Junos Firefly parameter VMs. Uh, but you can use similar concept with other Junos devices as well. Okay. So uh, let's get started. So uh, let me go to the script. Okay. So we're gonna let me clear the screen first. So I have created a script already, um, and we're gonna go to the script. So. Uh, the script starts with the main function, like uh, many Python scripts, as you know. Um, so uh, it basically uh, going to uh, 
uh, take uh, the CSV file path. Uh, then it's going to ask for the uh, config uh, template path and then username of the device and the password of the devices and then um, it will process the CSV file using this import CSV function uh, which basically extract the information from the CSV file and then and then return a list uh, containing those extracted information and then we'll be uh, you know looping through that uh, CSV information uh, list and then assigning uh, to a dictionary, Python dictionary, uh, uh, with uh, key value pairs. Okay, so uh, as you see here, you know we are passing, you know we are we are assigning hostname, trust interface, and trust IP, admin user, domain, NTP and DNS, and management IP. Uh, management IP is only going to be used for our script to basically access the device. It's not going to be passed to the configuration uh, load functionality, uh, which we'll be discussing pretty soon. Um, and so once we have all those information uh, stored, uh, we're going to be calling the deploy config function, which I created. Uh, we'll be doing the actual work of config deployment and committing. Uh, and then uh, that takes you know, a, a additionary object, uh, which is our variable, you can call it, of, the, of, the, uh, of this information. So this variable will be passing so that we have all this information. Uh, and then user and password and the config template file. So in this case, our config template file is the same, right? So we have a single template file, and all we'll be doing is basically changing the variables uh, uh, on the template file so that, you know, for different devices, we, you know, assign different values, okay? Uh, so let me go to the uh, import CSV file first, uh, import CSV function, just to take a quick glance, and then I'm going to be showing you the deploy config uh, function, okay? So let me go up a little bit. So uh, the, the import CSV basically, as you see here, it uses the CSV library that we imported and then uh, it processes that uh, information. It's pretty simple. Uh, and then uh, it basically returns the list here. Okay. So it's importing uh, and then, you know, assigned to a list of all the values, uh, you know, extracted from the CSV file. And then the deploy config one, basically, what it's doing is basically it's uh, uh, opening, uh, initiating a connection with the device through netconf uh, through the open function uh, which is basically device uh, object. Uh, so we imported uh, this library here, this class, and we imported the device that we're using to initiate the connection of the with the device, okay? And then once we have that connection uh, initiated with the dev open, and uh, we basically set a timeout value of three minutes so that you know the, the uh, RPC connection doesn't timeout. Uh, so you can change that to different timeout settings depending on the news. If you're doing a Junos upgrade, you probably want to set it to a higher value on your script. And then once we have the device open connection is done and timeout is done, we are basically using the config widget, uh, which basically uh, came from here like this. Uh, you know, we imported the config you know widget. And then we are passing uh, the device object, uh, and, and so that we can use it for configuration uh, load. Okay, so that's uh, part of the CU variable, and then that CU variable is basically uh, is loading the configuration using uh, this load functionality, uh, load function that is available on the config class. Uh, I'll show you how to see the help uh, help of that load function that will give you some more information that can be handy to understand more how uh, and what are the different a way you can load configs uh, with Juno's Pi Easy. Uh, so in this case, since we're doing template-based deployment, we need to pass a template path variable which contains the template file path and then the a, a variable template underscore verse dictionary object uh, which basically going to contain a basic dictionary variable, okay? Uh, so we're passing those and then that basically goes to the device and then uh, loads the config in this case. By default, it does a uh, lo the load function does it load replace according to the documentation. Uh, so, but you can you can have you know different way of loading config. So you can do uh, you know a static configuration file, or you can do set set config or uh, XML uh, depending on your need. But if you check the help of the load function, you'll you'll know more on that on that uh, piece. Okay. 
Uh, then once you're done, we're gonna we're gonna be running a uh, diff so that we can uh, you know see what we are changing uh, with the load, and that is being done by this this line here. Cu dot uh, pd basically we are calling the pd function, and then uh, we do a commit check so that we ensure that what we are trying to commit you know it meets the requirement. It, it, there is no error or anything. Uh, commit check is also a function of the uh, the config widget right so um, if it's uh, successful it will return true and that's when we're going inside of this function uh, this segment here uh, where we'll be committing the config using this cu.commit this line here uh, uh, and that's committing the uh, config right uh, and then finally we're closing the uh, con uh, connection so that we don't have any RPC connection open okay so uh, let me show you the device uh, load documentation a little bit and see how we can find out about the documentation of the load uh, function of the config. Uh, so I'm going to go to Python and then I'm going to do from JNPR Junos Utils config import config. Okay. And then I'm going to do help on config dot load so then I can see uh, all the you know functionality that this function provides so we are using this one the template path it gives us information what it does and as you see here it uses Jinja 2 format uh, you know the double curly braces uh, you know thing that you saw that's what Jinja 2 is all about <laughs> most of it actually uh, and then uh, we're using this one as a parameter and which is as you see as a dictionary type so it's a little bit more information and then uh, you can also see you know config pdiff right that gives some information about what it does uh, similarly you can do commit check okay you can see some information about commit check functionality it returns true and finally you can do a help on the commit okay you can see some information on what it does, uh, the commit function. As you see, it's true, successful. Uh, okay, so let's go back. Uh, I'm just gonna run the script now just to show you how it looks like. So let's, uh, actually, before I before I uh, run the script, I'm gonna show you one device, what we have there. So I'm gonna SSH to one of the devices that we're gonna be using. So let's log into 10 or R1 device, possible R1 device, and I wanna show you what we have there. Okay, so I'm going to do a show configuration. So as you see here, the device doesn't have the uh, host name uh, and the user account is not there that we're trying to add. Uh, and NTP is not configured. Uh, GE001 is not configured, right? Um, okay, so I'm going to exit out and run the script. Okay, so. Um, so the first thing we ask the script ask is CSV file path. So I can give an uh, you know path, exact path of the of the uh, CSV file that we will be using, which I showed at the beginning. So which will be scripts working. I think it's called devices.csv. And then it asks for the template file, the config template that I showed, which is base.conf. Okay, and the username, password. Okay, and then it's gonna start doing its thing. Okay, so now it's gonna log into each of these devices and then config. Uh, as you see here, this is the first device. You know, it's uh, it's adding this configuration. Uh, it's gonna load the config and and then, then the, I think the load is successful and then uh, it's performing the diff. And uh, scroll down a little bit here. So uh, that's the first device. You see the, in the log here, it shows uh, the device IP, and then it goes to the second device, and the host name is set to the FW2. Uh, you know, the user account is added. Same thing is happening. So as you see here, uh, with the first case, it, 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 it said the host name is FW1. For the second device, it said the host name is FW2. 
uh, same thing with the IP addresses uh, and the uh, uh, domain name right so they are different in all of these devices uh, so I can just use one config template and 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 deploy them on multiple devices with different uh, variables right so that's the beauty of this uh, Juno spy easy uh, template based config deployment so now let me go to one of those devices let me see if I can use that account that I had uh, and log in as that user okay so uh, I'm gonna see knock admin Okay. Okay, I'm logged in. So that user account is added. And if I do show configuration, I can see all this information added. Uh, so that's the beauty of Juno's Pi Easy and uh, template-based config deployment. And it can save a lot of time for you. Think about a situation where you have to deploy, you know, you know, more than three devices, like you know, uh, 20, 30 devices, right, together. And 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 let's say say you have an automated system that does the uh, you know, CSV uh, generation, it generates CSV file based on the user request and then you basically uh, deploy them automatically with the script. So you can achieve all that with uh, Jonas Pi Easy if you like. Uh, thanks for watching. I, I hope this uh, video was successful. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.